Hey guys, Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com bringing you my review plus on feet video of the Concave Volt Plus. Now inside the box they do include a string bag, you can see it right here. It's light blue in color with white strings and then features the Concave logo there and kind of like a silver light grey color. And of course you get the shoes right here. This is the Concave Volt Plus. Uh, the speed model from the Concave brand. Now for those that aren't familiar with Concave, this is a brand that's been around for a little while, kind of more so on and off, I would say. Uh, they've been making more of a comeback in terms of marketing uh, a little bit more heavily uh, as of the last six months or so. And they were nice enough to send these out for review. So that's what I'm gonna do for you in today's video. Now for those that aren't familiar with Concave at all, they're kind of claimed to fame as a brand. The signature feature you're gonna find on pretty much all of their shoes is a form of this kind of plasticky wedge shaped piece that runs across the top of your foot. Being that this is kind of their speed model, it does have a little bit of a smaller element here, uh, but that is, like I said, kind of their claim to fame in terms of what makes Concave different from other brands out there. I've worn Concave shoes in the past, and as far as how much of a difference this element makes in regards to striking the ball, is a little bit questionable, but we'll get into more details on that a little bit later in the video. So of course, in this video, we're gonna go over tech specs, performance features, talk about the overall quality of the shoe, take a look at the weight, as well as take a look at how these things fit and feel on feet. So if you are interested in learning a little bit more about the Concave Volt Plus, please stick around and watch the entire video. If you're interested in a pair of these for yourself, there'll be a little pop-up on screen, or you can click the first link down below. That'll take you to the review page on my website, where you'll find Buy It Now links for this particular shoe where you can pick them up at the $210 retail price. So again, if you're interested in a pair, first link down below, little eye on screen, go ahead and check it out. And with that being said, let's get right into the review. Before we get into the tech specs and performance features of the Concave Volt Plus specifically, I want to share some thoughts and opinions on the Concave brand and concept in general. So what I have right here is the Concave Quantum 2. This was featured on my channel a number of years ago, including in my most powerful soccer cleat video, which if you haven't seen that, I'll leave a little pop-up on screen. It's a video where I test out a whole bunch of different shoes, including the Quantum 2, with a radar gun from the penalty spot to see if a certain shoe would allow me to have a more powerful shot or what the variation would be from shoe to shoe in, in regards to actual shot power. And given the Concave Quantum 2 and this large wedge made out of a hard plastic material across the top of your foot, it does make sense to a certain extent that this would allow for a more powerful shot. If you guys watch the video, you're gonna see that that wasn't the, the result at all. It didn't lead to a more powerful shot whatsoever. So instead, you're left with an element that's very focused around striking the ball, and it felt fine when you were shooting the ball, but in every other aspect of the game, it felt bulky, it felt out of place, and the overall quality of the shoe, in my opinion, just isn't the greatest. It doesn't fit very well, it's not the best product in the world. I can't say that I'm a huge fan of the Concave Quantum 2. Now moving on to the Concave Volt Plus, this being part of their new speed line. Again, I kind of have the same criticisms of the shoe. The quality is not incredible. The retail on this guy is $210 US and whenever I review a high-end model from any of the smaller brands, and I've talked about this before in my videos, I have to take into consideration how it compares to the more popular top-end models from very popular brands like Nike, Adidas, and Puma. This being $210 US, if Nike were to put this out as their top-end product, if Adidas were to put this out as their top-end product, would it pass? Would it be able to have a Nike swoosh? Would it be able to have three Adidas stripes? and kind of pass in terms of quality with other products that the brand has put out? And the simple answer to that question is, is no. This is just not on par quality wise, especially when you're talking about the quality of the synthetic in comparison to other comparably priced shoes from bigger brands. This to me feels like the quality of a takedown model that would retail for $100 not 210 and that's just being completely honest with you guys i'm not trying to bash concave i'm not trying to bash small brands in general but i think that's a very fair criticism with smaller brands that if their product legitimately isn't as good quality as what you're going to find from the bigger brands out there then i don't really see much reason to buy a product like this so 
Another thing in regards to this particular shoe is the actual concave striking element. Like I showed you guys on the Quantum 2, very big, covers the entire middle part of the foot, and it's a really hard plastic. Not sure if you guys can hear that, but um, this is something that obviously is going to provide a lot of protection across the top of your foot, and it's a very solid surface for shooting the ball. The concept makes a little bit of scent, sense to a certain extent, but obviously it doesn't necessarily translate into better performance in regards to shot power. With this shoe, you can see that it does maintain a concave striking element, although it is, I would say, a third of the size, and it's positioned so high up the foot, I would argue that it's not necessarily something that even is gonna come in, in contact with the ball all that much ever. The only pro time that you're really gonna make contact with the ball um, in terms of shooting with this part of the foot is on a volley or something like that. Otherwise, you're really gonna be using this part of your foot more so than this part of your foot. The other thing to take into consideration here is that the, the concave element now is this kind of silicone type material, almost something you would see uh, from an iPhone case or a, a cheap phone case in general. There's some firmness to it, but it's relatively soft and pliable. So I would really question how much impact that's actually gonna have in terms of translating to power. It's not going to, that's kind of the simple answer. And what you're left with is a chunk of rubbery plastic silicone material across the top of your foot in an area of the foot that, quite honestly, I don't necessarily want to have a lot of extra bulk. Uh, so for me, this striking element, I would view as more of a negative thing than a positive thing on this particular shoe. It's, it's just not something that I think most people want in a shoe. There's some protection to this, absolutely. But that aside, I think it's kind of a... Uh, an annoying element to have on your shoe in pretty much every situ every other situation in regards to making contact with the ball. So for me, I don't really see much value to the concave striking element as a whole on pretty much any of the implementations that I've tried. I don't think the quality of the synthetic is all that great on this particular shoe. The fit is a little bit strange as well, mainly due to the lacing system and how it has to work around this particular concave element. And again, for $210, $200, let's say, I just think there are better shoes out there. So to talk specifically on tech specs, I know that was a little bit of a rant, and I don't want this to come across as a super, super negative review, but again, with any of these smaller companies, if they're gonna charge a premium price tag for their shoes, I just really feel strongly that it has to be on par with the other models from the bigger brands. If it's not, I think it's open to harsh criticism and that's why I, I feel the way I do about this particular shoe. So the upper does feature a microfiber material and the quality of the microfiber, again, it's decently soft, it's decently flexible, but it doesn't necessarily feel premium in any way. There's nothing about this that I wouldn't expect to see on a $100 takedown model uh, from a Mercurial, for example. It's, it's decently thin, but definitely not what I would say is gonna provide all that much of a barefoot sensation. There are much thinner, more premium uppers out there. Um, there is a bit of a kind of liner on the inside that's this kind of mesh type material and that's a reinforcement layer. Um, and again, the lockdown of the shoe is very much dependent on the fit. So having this reinforcement layer given the fit of the shoe doesn't necessarily have that big of an impact in regards to overall responsiveness. Um, the comfort level of this microfiber, definitely not bad. Um, can't really criticize it too much for that. You do have what is pretty much a smooth matte texturing to the upper, but then you have these translucent concave logos in the form of texturing that basically aren't featured across the middle of the forefoot and then kind of split onto the sides. And it's a decent amount of texturing, a little bit of grippiness on the ball, but nothing too significant. Laces run through the middle, as you guys can see, and the lacing system is kind of interesting in that it does run kind of in and out of the actual concave striking element. You can see there's three holes on either side. So it's a little bit difficult to tighten these properly and just to get the proper fit in general because you kind of have to work around the shape of this striking element, but that's something we'll talk about a little bit later in the video. The tongue, again, something that to me just feels very cheap on the shoe. Uh, it doesn't necessarily come across as something you would expect to find on a $200 model. Uh, inside, uh, obviously it's a low cut shoe, I'll say that first. There is an internal heel counter and then a little bit of a lip to the actual uh, sole plate. So I guess that counts as somewhat of an external heel counter as well, but pretty solid at the back nonetheless. You have a nice suede liner on the inside. That's probably the most premium aspect of this particular shoe, in my opinion. I'll remove the insole so you guys can get a look at that. Standard mesh liner on top, some perforations throughout, and it's just a pretty standard um, 
black foam material, nothing too crazy there in regards to the insole. And then underneath in the heel, they did position another layer of foam just as a, an extra bit of cushioning. Hopefully you guys can see that. A little bit bad lighting just because of the situation here or the angle, but you can see it's right there. It's a very thin layer of foam. It's not something that I found to be particularly noticeable when actually wearing the shoe. And then moving on to the sole plate and stud pattern, it does feature a PBAX material for the sole plate. It's actually quite thin and decently flexible. Didn't really find that stud pressure was an issue, although it is a firm ground stud pattern made for use on natural grass. Would not recommend using these on artificial grass because of how thin the sole plate is. Uh, and the stud pattern itself, um, it gets the job done. It's nothing too fancy in regards to the layout. It's more of a bladed stud pattern. Kind of has this teardrop shape, I guess somewhat reminiscent to what you'll find from the Adidas X line, but it does get the job done. Has a decent aggressive layout to it. It's kind of similar to the, to the older Adidas stud patterns before they went to this newer style with the sprint frame sole plates. So if you're a fan of that particular style of stud pattern, this is going to feel pretty similar to that. And again, it's, it's definitely a, a good quality of the shoe in terms of uh, just providing decent traction. The sole plate and stud pattern, I don't really have any issues with, but the upper to me just, I guess, isn't on par with what I would expect from a top end model at this particular price point. Am I being harsh? I personally don't think I am, but let me know your opinions on the shoe down below in the comment section. In regards to weight, the Concave Volt Plus feels relatively lightweight in hand. Of course, for the sake of the video, I'm gonna weigh them for you today in real time using this scale. Keep in mind that this is a brand new pair in a size nine US. We're gonna throw them on the scale and you can see that they weigh in at 7.65 ounces, the equivalent of 217 grams. So uh, in the mid seven ounce range, that's not bad for a top end shoe, being that this is part of their speed line, which would imply their lightest offering. There are obviously much lighter shoes at this particular price point out there. But at the same time, I don't necessarily think that if you're buying a concave shoe in general, you're too concerned about the weight of the product. This is really something that's going to appeal to somebody who very specifically wants a concave product no matter what. Uh, and again, for the sake of weight, they are relatively light. I can't really complain about that all that much. As far as aesthetics go, to me, when I look at the Concave Volt Plus, I really don't get that premium vibe from them. I think the clunkiness of the actual Concave striking element across the top just doesn't really flow with the design of the shoe. Uh, the overall shape of the shoe, to me, again, looks like something you would expect on a cheaper model. Um, this particular colorway, it's listed as lime black on their uh, website. Uh, and you can see it's a very bright yellow with black accents throughout and then kind of a darker silver for the Volt branding there across the medial side. You have the big concave logo here on the lateral side in black, as well as the concave name written out on the lateral side of the heel. Black laces, black liner, black sole plate, and then black and yellow studs. Again, it's really going to be a matter of opinion. I don't think it's the best looking shoe in the world, but I wouldn't necessarily call it ugly either. It really is just one of those shoes that it's okay, doesn't really do anything special for me, but let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. Do you like how these look? Why or why not? And with that being said, let's move on to the on-feet portion of the video so you can get a better idea as to how these shoes fit, feel, and of course, what the sizing is like. All right, so here is a look at the Concave Volt Pluses on feet. Out of the box, the shoe fits pretty comfortably. There's not a whole lot to complain about in that department, but I have to say I'm not crazy about the overall shape. Uh, mainly in the toe box area, it has kind of an oddly pointed uh, toe, uh, which I don't mind, but I know a lot of people don't necessarily like that. Uh, so that's worth keeping in mind. The other thing that I immediately noticed when I put these on and tie the laces tight is that every subtle little movement has kind of a stretch to the upper uh, there's a lack of structure to this synthetic material. I know it does have that internal support lining that I did show you guys earlier in the video, but it doesn't necessarily seem to do the greatest job in terms of providing necessary structure for the overall responsiveness and lockdown of your foot inside of the shoe. Once you start running around and making quick changes of direction, there is a decent amount of rollover from this particular shoe, which I think is kind of unacceptable from a shoe, again, at this particular price point, especially from something that's being advertised as a quote unquote speed boot. Uh, the other thing that's definitely worth noting is that concave striking element across the top of your foot. It looks kind of unusual. You don't really feel it when you're wearing the shoes, but when you make contact with the ball, it's definitely noticeable in terms of you get a hard spot on the top of your foot. It doesn't necessarily translate into feel just because it is a silicone material. It doesn't necessarily 
allow you to feel the ball on your foot. And it just feels like a bulky hard spot that's attached to the top of your foot. Again, it, it's something that I guess if you really want to try it out, concave is your only option. But for me personally, I just would rather not have that on the shoe at all. And I think that a lot of companies are designing their shoes based around less bulk across the top of the foot, which is kind of the opposite of what you're getting here from this particular shoe. And I guess the concave brand in general. So it's a very niche type of thing in terms of what they have here. Uh, but again, it really just depends on what you're looking for. They do give you the extra lace hold if you do have any issues with lockdown in the heel. I didn't really feel the need to use it and I didn't feel like the laces were necessarily long enough to uh, use that extra lace hold. But nonetheless, the fit, like I said, is pretty decent in terms of lockdown uh, in the heel. No issues with heel slippage. It's just the structure of the upper and just the overall shape of the shoe that I'm personally not too crazy about. Width-wise, it's got good width in the toe box and forefoot area, a little bit more snug in the midfoot, just based on how they cut the upper here through the lacing system. Again, kind of around the actual concave striking element, so that's a little bit unusual, but I think for the most part, these will fit most people as long as you don't have excessively wide feet. And as far as sizing is concerned, I'm wearing my usual size 9 US here, and the fit and the length is absolutely perfect. So if you are looking to order a pair for yourself, I would strongly recommend going true to size in order to achieve the best possible fit. All right, guys, that is it for my review of the Concave Volt Plus. If you guys are interested in a pair of these for yourself, you can either click the little eye in the corner of the screen or the first link down below. That'll take you to the review page on my website where you'll find Buy It Now links for this particular shoe. If you have any questions regarding this shoe, leave them down below in the comment section and I definitely will get an answer out to you. If you enjoyed today's video, found it helpful and informative, be sure to support the video with a like. Subscribe if you haven't already for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear. You can find all of my social media information linked down below in the description as well. And other than that, guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. And as always, thanks for watching.